So I started with a piece of round 5 inch steel ducting, which is perfect because it's already completely reflective. And in order to create a perpendicular line across the entire cylinder, I used a piece of printer paper, which as long as the paper is parallel to the cylinder, the line that it makes will always be perpendicular because of Gauss's remarkable theorem, which is pretty cool. To cut the steel, I used some tin snips, and I wouldn't say tin snips are the best tool for the job, but it's what I had lying around, and they definitely worked. But what I found I had to do was tackle it from both sides, and also use a two-pass process where I did one really dirty cut like this one just to sort of isolate the section that I was working with. And then once I was done with that, I had a really jagged edge. So I cleaned it up a little bit. And then I further cleaned it up by taking a hammer to it and straightening out the line. To create the ends of the light, which would define its dome shape, I wanted to make perfect semicircles, or rather segments of circles, since they would be less than semicircles. So to do this, I used a wire as a radius attached to a marker and just drew a circle in a piece of wood. I also used the ventilation fan I was going to use, which was just a computer fan, to mark out the hole I would need for it. With a belt sander, I cleaned up the edges of the two end pieces and made sure they had the same shape. I also realized that these circular segments were going to be way too big for the reflector to actually wrap around them, since it's only a 5 inch diameter piece of tubing so I had to cut them way down. This created more of a crescent moon shape as opposed to a semicircle shape, which was kind of an issue at the end because instead of the light being channeled down into a column below the lamp, it was sort of fanned out because the reflector wasn't semicircular enough. I used a hole saw with a makeshift arbor to cut out the hole for the ventilation fan but you could just as well use a jigsaw or a coping saw. I decided to seal the wood since it would be in a relatively high moisture environment, so I just used some latex paint that I had lying around. I marked out where I would need to drill holes in the sheet metal in order to attach it with screws to the side pieces and I decided to make a hole every one and a half inches. I then replicated all the markings on the other side of the sheet metal, since there's two end caps. I found it a little bit annoying to work with this material, since it's always trying to spring back into a circular shape, but it's actually worth it, because when you have to form the sheet metal around the dome end caps, it makes it really easy. Then I just drilled a hole at each location that I marked. And the holes came out pretty clean. I then marked out the center of the light because that's where the LEDs would go and I needed to mount the heatsink there. To make the heatsink, I just used some raw aluminum stock that I bought at Home Depot and I cut it into 15 centimeter segments 
This stock is 1 8 inch by 3 4 inch and it cuts pretty easily with a hacksaw. Another nice thing about aluminum is that it's relatively easy to work with. I also decided to use it because it's relatively inexpensive and easily available and it has good thermal properties. So I ended up with three pieces of raw aluminum stock and a small heatsink that I got off of eBay. All of these combined should have enough thermal mass to absorb the heat from the LEDs and enough surface area to dissipate that heat. I then clamped all the pieces together so that I could drill a hole through them at the same time so that they're all perfectly aligned. I decided to do it this way because not all the pieces came out the same size so marking it all out would have been much, much harder. I drilled a total of three holes so that all the pieces would be clamped together really tightly. And again, aluminum is an awesome material because if you have drill bits for wood, you can drill through aluminum. I used some simple green to wash any grease or residue off of the aluminum pieces so that they would have the best thermal conductivity possible when in contact. I then used one of the aluminum pieces to transfer the hole locations onto the reflector. To make sure that the aluminum was completely free of grease, I used some isopropyl alcohol to wipe them down. This heat sink compound that I used between the pieces of aluminum is just some regular CPU thermal paste that I found on clearance at Micro Center. Using the heat sink compound and three nuts and bolts, I sandwiched the reflector between the aluminum pieces so that the heat would travel from the LEDs through the reflector and up out of the lamp. Using this kind of sandwich configuration to make the heat sink not only lets the heat pass through and out of the light, but it also makes the reflector part of the heat sink. And because the reflector is metal, it'll absorb some of that heat and dissipate it out over its large surface area. So now it's a little bit more clear to see the sandwich configuration and how the heat will travel out of the lamp. The nice thing about this is that the entire lamp basically becomes one giant heatsink, which solves the big problem of heat with LEDs. Now that that was done, the only thing I had to do to complete the basic structure of the lamp was mount the two end caps, which since I already pre-drilled the holes, was pretty easy to do with just some screws. So now on to the LEDs and the electronics. The first thing I did was test everything on a heatsink so that the LEDs wouldn't destroy themselves. And it took me a while to figure out how to use the power supply since I got it for super cheap off of eBay. I wouldn't recommend these but they are really cheap. And it's just a matter of switching between constant current and constant voltage mode, which you do with two potentiometers. And I'll link a video about this power supply in the description that someone else made that taught me how to use them. In order to attach the LEDs to the aluminum heatsink, I needed a thermally conductive glue that wasn't electrically conductive, and I found this Arctic Alumina paste on Amazon, and it worked really well. It's a two-part paste, and I found that it sets up in about five minutes, and once it dries, it's super hard. This glue is a little bit expensive, but it's super high quality, and I wouldn't skimp on it because it will be the bottleneck for the thermal conductivity of your heatsink. I used an old piece of ductwork to make the enclosure for the power supply. I don't know why, but ductwork ended up somehow becoming a bit of a motif in this project, and I think it's because it's just a good available source of sheet metal that you don't have to buy in bulk. 
After the enclosure was done, I fitted the power supply inside of it just to see how things would look. And as you can see, it's a pretty tight fit, and I wanted to make sure that nothing would short out. But in the end, it worked out fine. I attached the power supply directly to the lamp so that the lamp reflector could act as a bit of a heat sink for the power supply. And attaching the power supply was pretty straightforward. I just drilled two holes and one extra hole for the wires to come through the reflector. I decided to only use two screws since the reflector is domed and the power supply kind of sits at an angle. So once the power supply was mounted, I mounted the cover for it over it. And I did this just because it would have been a lot easier to do it this way. The cover is important because there might be some water splashing or humidity around the area of this lamp and I want to make sure that none of that gets into contact with the power supply. You could also choose to put this power supply further downstream next to your 12 volt power supply and this way there's no power supply anywhere near the lamp and all of that is taken care of somewhere else. But I decided to put it upstream right where the lamp is. Next I had to finish the wiring, which basically just involved a lot of stripping and soldering and heat shrink tubing. I think the wires that I used might have been a little bit overkill. Each one of these LEDs are 5 watts, so I wanted to be cautious, but these are pretty thick wires. And I made sure to use heat shrink tubing on every joint just because it is going to be a high moisture environment with potential splashes of water, so I wanted to err on the side of caution. There are some exposed wires, for example, right on the LEDs and where the LED connects to the wires, but I hope that the ventilation fan will help with the humidity enough that these exposed places won't become an issue. Next I had to install the switches. And again, this just involved a lot of soldering and a lot of heat shrink tubing. To solder this switch, which would be the switch for the fan, I kind of just globbed the solder on and then hid the mess with some heat shrink tubing. I also had to solder the ventilation fan wires in line to the main 12 volt supply. For the main power switch, instead of just cutting off the ground or the positive 12 volts, I decided to use the switch to cut off both of them at the same time, just for added safety. And then I tested the light and it seemed to work pretty well. I mounted it onto the stand above the sump with some eye hooks, or rather eyelets since they're completely closed. And then some S hooks and some chain are used just to hang it right above. And it looks like it's working perfectly. The light is relatively quiet. The fan isn't too loud, and here you can see how the different color LEDs sort of interact in the light. And I wanted some blue, some 
full spectrum and some white, mostly for looks. If this was completely for effectiveness, I would have used just full spectrum LEDs, but I wanted it to look kind of good too, so I decided to put some blue and some, I think, 6500K LEDs in there too. Okay, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed the project and the video. If you have any suggestions, please leave them down in the comments below. I'm currently working on a larger light using similar principles, so if you want to see that coming up in the future and other projects, please subscribe. You can also check out some of my old videos too. Thanks for watching and have a good day.